Say hi to everybody, Gabby. Gabby. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. So we're working in the chicken coop again today. Oh, we I have, know. She's upset. I know she, she is. came in there and scared her away. So we have had issues with the uh, birds not wanting to nest in here lately. Definitely not getting as many eggs as we were throughout the whole winter. It's like this morning I let them out and there was only one, there was no eggs at all. And normally I have two to three eggs in the morning. But they've been afraid to nest in here and we're thinking because I had moved them from this wall here and down here and they were so low that the guinea and the turkey, the guinea and the turkey are picking on the hens when they're in the boxes trying to lay. And then another reason why we're not getting a bunch of eggs is because Miss Gabby has been stealing them. So I've been trying to make sure that I come out and check eggs and collect them when before we let her out. Or right, right when we let her out and she comes up here with me and I collect the eggs if she doesn't get any. So the birds have been nesting underneath the scary cabin. There's three nests in our compost bin right out here. Ask Stuart to step to the side for a second. Yep, right there. There's three nests in there. So hopefully this will help. They'll love the fresh bedding. That'll be good. All right. So you want to tell them what happened with the truck? Are you going to make me tell them what happened with the truck? I told them that we would let them know what happened. The truck go boom. The truck go boom. It fell down and go boom. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly happened? So we did have some stuff going on with the front bearings. They weren't blown or they, they hadn't gone out yet, but definitely had some noise going on in there when they would turn. So we thought that was it and got those replaced. We still had the noise. And me not being a mechanic, you just don't think of all the stuff to check. But on the way, on the way to work one day, I'm <clears throat> going down a, one of our side road hills back here. And that was after you changed the bearings, yeah, too. Yeah. Okay. And so I was going down one of the side road hills, and I go to put on my brake, you know, slow down a little bit because it was icy. And the brakes on the truck just locked up. I'm just like, oh crap. Well, I got to get off the road at least because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a one-lane road, you know, dirt road, and it's on a curve, and I got to at least get off the road, so I'm just powering through it, just dragging the rear tires through this, down this little road to get off to the side, and the truck breaks free. The brakes break free? The brakes release. I'm like, oh, good. I can still go to work. <laughs> so I pull over and check the check the brakes. And nasty gouges on my rear discs. Nasty gouges. So I guess I got what what made me start. Back up. Rewind. <laughs> what made me start looking at the the bearings to begin with, I got stuck in the driveway because it was too icy. I was backing down the driveway and the brake pedal went all the way to the floor. So I call a friend of ours and ask him what's going on. We got brake fluid and this and that. and He's like, bearings. That's where started checking out the bearings I pulled so that Friday was I was off I pulled the bearings out or pulled the yeah actually I think I took everything apart the bearings were still good but there were still some rubbing so we're just like that could be it I don't know let's just replace them anyway the truck's 20 years old 200,000 miles on it needed to be done anyway it needs to be done anyway We've never replaced them in the front. 
so we're just going to do it. So when the brakes locked up, I think that was the rear brakes, or not when they locked up, but when the pedal went to the floor, I think, I think that was the rear brakes failing. Mm. So the next Monday I'm going to work, right? It was Monday. So the, yeah, because we did the bearings on the weekend, went for a test drive on Sunday, Monday I was going to work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's when it failed. So I, I get down to the bottom and um, pull over, check the, check the discs, and that's when I noticed the disc was just like shot. Gouged, like no tomorrow, right? Yeah. And, and we can take you up and show you pictures of the disc. So I get going down the hill and the brakes start grinding really bad. They're really bad. I'm like, all right, this is no big deal. I can drive with the brake brakes grinding, and it's easy peasy. You know, that's what gears are for. So you really don't even need to, you can get down to 10 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour using your gears if you do it right, and really only have to use your brake at the very last second to make your stop. So I did that. On Monday, got the parts. On Wednesday. No, I fixed it on Wednesday. Got the parts on, yeah, got the parts on Tuesday, and then Wednesday I replaced the back brakes, and there's, she's going to show you a picture. What happened was the brakes on the driver's side actually spit out the shoes. So they were damaged that bad. So the only thing that was stopping the truck was the pistons in the calipers. And you thought you saw signs of possible it, that they uh, they could have started a fire. Say what? Yeah, they were they got seriously heated up, and I wasn't even using the brakes. I mean, the truck was getting down to five miles an hour. And you drove it like that for three days. For, th for three with days. With no brakes, and you were just with, using gears to slow yourself down. Yeah. That was freaking scary. It, it was pretty scary. I was really nervous. I didn't have a choice. Well, I guess I could have. I could have not gone to work, and I could have not made money. Or you could have not gone into town to get the parts, and we'll just stay up here on the mountain forever. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes extreme cases, you, you, you have to, you, you got to kind of do stuff. You just yeah. got to kind of roll the dice. You know, I'm, I'm a confident enough driver. I've been a commercial driver for 25, 26 years, however long it's been now. And you, you learn how to drive. You know, you learn how to not use your brakes being a commercial driver. Except to stop the vehicle. Yep. And you can get the vehicle, using your gears and your pickup or any of your cars, you can get the vehicle down to really slow before you have to put on your brakes. So the only it, thing that where it becomes a real well, not having brakes is a safety issue, but the only thing that really scared me is when you're driving on the freeways, if a deer jumps out in front of you or a car freaking cuts you off, or that's when you don't have the brakes when you absolutely have to have them. Well, and that's where being being a cognitive driver comes into play. If you're just if you do what you're supposed to do when you're driving Keeping your distance. Keep your distance. Being aware. 360 degree awareness. Awareness. What is it? You, you're aware. You anticipate and you adjust. Yep. Three simple rules for driving. Be aware, anticipate, and adjust. The three A's, isn't that what the it's three called? Three A's. That's what it's called. So anyway, that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm glad that he has brakes again, and we don't have to worry about that no more. So. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, absolutely. So, we're going to finish taking care of these girls in here. I've got to get the eggs out from the compost bin in there. And um, hopefully with them having raised, nest boxes raised next bo boxes now and fresh stuff in here, this will, hopefully they'll lay in here now. But yeah, we've got eggs all over. The dogs have been spending a lot more time outside lately because they do Easter egg hunts. <laughs> they know where the 
birds have been hiding their eggs and laying, and so they come out and try to find eggs. So, all right, that's all we got. Truck update, what happened with that? And what's going on with our eggs? <laughs> hopefully, we, hopefully we can solve this problem. When we have a new coop, it's gonna be so much better. Dogs won't be able to get in there. We'll have a regular chicken door and we'll have a man door, but the man door won't, won't be open unless we're using it. So, so the dogs won't be able to fit through the chicken door. So that'll be a plus. Not sure what we're gonna do about the guinea. Anybody who's owned guinea, I'm talking, lady. Are they mean? Do you guys, does everybody have the same experience that we're having? These guinea are really mean. I've seen them, they make the other birds bleed. They pick on them when they're roosting at night on the roost. I've gone in there to lock them up and they're, and they're, they're vicious. They're attacking them and, but... Can we separate them somehow when we do the new coop? Should we do a little coop from the guinea? And the guinea are supposed to eventually, I guess, sleep outside. But they, these these haven't done that. They go to bed in the in the coop with all the other birds. So, I don't know. Anybody out there know what we can do about the guinea? Do we need to separate them from the other birds? Comment below. Let us know. Till next time, Rinker. What? Until next time. Bye, everyone.